All right, what's up, guys? Um, I am totally procrastinating doing something else right now, doing other things right now, and I'm on a roll of making videos. So here's a video introducing some basics of Adobe Illustrator, because I don't really have that yet, and I use it in a lot of the classes I teach. So um, I'm currently in Adobe Illustrator 2019, um, but a lot of the stuff I'm teaching is dates back to like before Creative Cloud when it was just like the Creative Suite. Um, let's go ahead and make a new document. <clears throat> so uh, some basics when create new documents is we have some preset sizes and templates up here. Um, mobile, web, print, film, video, kind of self-evident as to what you'd be creating them for. Um, in my graphic design classes, we tend to create documents for print, which are uh, it's meant to be printed. Letter size, if we re change points to inches real quick, we see that it's 8.5 by 11, which is the same thing as a standard piece of computer paper. <clears throat> um, another one I use pretty commonly in class is tabloid size, which is right over here. It's 11 by 17 inches. Um, it's just a, a little bit taller piece of paper. Um, so let's just go ahead and give ourselves that to start playing with. <clears throat> now, um, Basic tools, just creating shapes in Illustrator. Um, if I go over here on the left-hand side, uh, here, you know what, let's move myself real quick because something that is really basic in Illustrator is your different workspaces. Right here where it says Essentials, if I click that down, I have different kinds of workspaces. Now, uh, if you're new to Illustrator and you might accidentally click a hotkey or you move a window and it no longer looks the way that it does on my screen, you just quickly go to Reset Essentials. So let's say I accidentally like click stuff around and it got crazy or I can't find my layers or I can't find whatever, right up here, reset essentials. And it defaults right back to the way that it should be. Put myself back. Um, <clears throat> so over here on the left hand side, we have our basic, basic tools. Under uh, any sh tool I zoom in that has this little white arrow has tools underneath it. So if I click and hold, there's more and more tools. Let's start with a rectangle tool. I can click and drag a basic rectangle. I'm going to move myself on some more. Um, now, I still have the rectangle tool selected. It's important that if I want to move or edit that rectangle that I go and select the black arrow tool, also known as selection tool, V on the keyboard. So if I just hit V, boom, I have that arrow selected. Now I can move this guy around. I can stretch him out. I can change his shape. Over here on the right-hand side, under appearance, I have my stroke and my fill. My fill is the color inside the rectangle. My stroke is the outline. So I could change the color of the stroke. I could increase the weight of the stroke, which is the size. And I can even change the color of the fill. Very basic stuff. Let's say I want to uh, make another uh, shape, but I want this to be a perfect square. Um, I could use the smart guys, which are those pink lines, but it's an exhausting way around. If I just hold shift on my keyboard, it constrains the proportions to be a perfect square. Similarly, I'm just hitting delete to delete those. If I uh, grab my ellipse tool, these are all the hotkeys. So M is the rectangle tool. L is the ellipse tool. I love hotkeys because everything just goes quicker when you're like not having to find it all in menus. The ellipse tool makes ovals, but while I'm clicking and dragging, if I hold shift, it constrains it to be a perfect circle. Then other things, the fill and the stroke. This little red slash is none, so I can give it no fill or no stroke. Um, kind of helpful. Let's see here. What other basics could I cover? Uh, I love to alt drag things, and what alt dragging means, if I grab my selection tool, again, V on the keyboard, and hold Alt or Option key on my keyboard, and then drag it again, it duplicates. Wow, really cool, really easy. Um, so Alt dragging is a quick way to duplicate things. I'm gonna hold Shift and scale that down. If I Alt drag something, and then hold Shift while I'm dragging it, it's gonna be at a perfect like straight line, uh, either immediately to the right, 45 degree angle diagonal, or immediately downward. Command D on the keyboard, Command D, duplicates my last action. My last action was to duplicate the circle, so Command-D will duplicate a few more circles. And just like that, alt-dragging, holding shift, Command-D, boom. We've got a few really cool hotkeys to start playing with stuff in Illustrator. Um, let's do one more thing for this uh, basics video, um, and that's working with text. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and select this all, hit delete on my keyboard, clear it out. The text tool over here, this uh, T, also T on the keyboard. I think the instinct when uh, you're using the text tool is to click and drag a text box, but that gives us some weird constraints in Illustrator um, that isn't ideal for us right now. So rather than clicking and dragging a text box, I'm just going to click once. And boom, now I can start typing. So let's go ahead and type out my name. Uh, from there, the text tool is still selected. I could go up and select the black arrow tool, or I could just hit escape on the keyboard. And now I can 
adjust this. Now, if I'm stretching it, it kind of stretches out the text, which doesn't really look good. So if I hold shift, it keeps the text in proportion. Over here, I can change what font it is. Um, so I can like search for fonts if I know one that I like. Um, I can change the size over here. I can change stuff like the tracking and kerning, which gets kind of advanced, um, but it's pretty cool. Now, uh, for one of the projects that I do in graphic design, I only let my students use one letter and one number in one font. So if I just had the letter J, I wonder why I would choose that. This is still text. What that means is Illustrator doesn't see this as a shape right now. If I right click it, right click it, uh, I have an option to create outlines. What that does is it converts my type or my text to a shape. Pros and cons. The con, the downside of that is it's no longer text. I can't change what it says. So like if I accidentally, you know, spell my last name wrong and then hit create outlines, I can't change what that says anymore. But what's cool about shapes is it activates the smart guides, like all these pink lines that tell me exactly where things are. And now it's going to be really easy just to play with this and maybe make some cool patterns. All right, I don't want this video to get too long, I'm a little over six minutes now. Um, so the very, very basics of starting to play with shapes and text in Adobe Illustrator. Thanks. <laughs>